I'm the CEO of Happy Gorilla Vegan Protein Bars. We make vegan protein bars that are 150% vegan. Last year, we did $11 billion in revenue. What do you attribute that to? I think the most important aspect, like literally the most important thing is my morning routine. I get up at 3 a.m. every single morning and I meditate for six hours. After that, I'll write my gratitude journal for a bit, run about 14 miles, and after that I read two books. I use Bulletproof Coffee every single morning. It's super, super good for your brain because it has um, butter and midichlorians in it. And alongside that, I usually fry up about eight slices of black pepper bacon, a slice of beef liver, and three hard-boiled eggs. And that's why my business is so successful. Morning routines. It seems that no matter where I go on the internet, I'm constantly seeing articles, videos, and books about why building a morning routine is the most important thing I could ever do, how it's gonna help me build a billion dollar business and basically become the next Elon Musk. But despite the oversaturation of morning routine related articles on the internet and the hyperbole in a lot of them, I do think this is an important topic to talk about. Building a morning routine was actually very meaningful to me. Now I'm not gonna say it changed my life or helped me build a billion dollar business, but it really did build some structure into the flow of my day. So in this video, I wanna share some of the things I've learned for creating a productive morning routine and also sticking with it over the long term. The first thing we gotta tackle right off the bat is getting up earlier. And this was really the first challenge for me because for many, many years, I was that kind of person who would roll out of bed 15 or 20 minutes before my first scheduled thing, throw some clothes on and basically rush out the door. I didn't have time to make breakfast, let alone read or do any of the other things that I wished I could have done. So I had to build some structures to make sure I would get out of bed earlier. And if this is something that you need to do, I do already have a video on this channel that I'll link to down in the description below that you can check out for lots and lots of tips on this subject, but I do wanna share one additional idea that my friend Evan Carmichael shared with me last week, and that is to never hit the snooze button. This is one of those things that seems obvious in theory, but difficult to put into practice, but the way that Evan framed this really stuck in my head because he said, if you hit the snooze button in the morning, then you are accepting that the first thing you do that day is fail. And that made a lot of sense to me because if you're gonna set an alarm for yourself, you are essentially setting a goal for yourself. So instead of taking that extra 10 minutes of sleep, just grit your teeth, jump out of bed as fast as you can and make that first act of the day a win. Tip number two is to start small and track your progress. The investor John Templeton once said that the four most expensive words in the English language are, this time it's different. And you're probably familiar with this. Maybe you failed at a gym routine or a New Year's resolution only to come back and say, this time it'll be different. This time I'll have more motivation, more willpower, more discipline, and I will win. But this is self-delusion, right? You don't just magically increase your willpower reserves overnight. You don't magically build habits overnight. These things take time. In fact, one study in the UK found that a habit can take on average 66 days to fully crystallize and become concrete. So if you just jump in and try to copy the morning routine of someone like Elon Musk or that blogger you read last week, the novelty might carry you through a couple of days, but that is far short of habit building territory and you're probably going to derail. Instead, pick a couple of habits that are meaningful to you and prove to yourself that you can do those consistently over time. Just stretch a bit beyond your comfort zone. And once you've established a new comfort zone, then add more. Along the way, you should also have a method for tracking your progress. Doing so will essentially give you a chain of successes and you're not gonna wanna break that chain when you can look back on it. So you're gonna be motivated to keep up your morning routine in the future. Now, if you wanna use the app that I use to build my routine, it's called Habitica. And it's essentially a gamified way to build habits. Every time you check off a habit, you get experience points that build up a character, and it's very Final Fantasy-esque, like an RPG. If that's a bit too nerdy for you and you want something a little simpler, there are apps like Today on iOS and Habit Bowl on Android. So at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, Tom, but what do I actually do in my morning routine? And we're gonna get into all those specifics in a second, but I wanna start this section off with a quote from the writer, Leo Babauta. The reason I like having a morning routine is not only does it instill a sense of purpose, peace, and ritual to my day, but it ensures that I'm getting certain things done every morning, namely my goals. 
What I want to point out from that quote is that Leo mentioned two main benefits to his morning routine. Number one, it gives him a sense of ritual to his day, some peace in the morning, and number two, it helps him make some progress on his goals. And it's important to highlight both of these benefits because I personally know people who do get up early, but who just use that extra time as quiet time, as some space to be alone, to think, and to start their morning slowly and deliberately. If all you want to do is get up early and make some tea and then take your morning slow, do it and don't feel guilty about it. If, however, you do want to fill your morning with productive habits, then a few I might suggest include having a glass of water right after you wake up, meditating for five or 10 minutes, going and doing a workout or some cardio to give yourself some energy for the day, and cooking a good, healthy breakfast. One thing that you should definitely leave out of your morning routine though, at least for the most part, is your phone. Now, I do use a timer app for meditating in the morning, and I also listen to Spotify or audiobooks while I'm in the gym, but I'm really deliberate about not looking at email or social media or anything of that type in the morning at all. And that's because those things are really likely to derail me from my habits and my routine. Finally, if you want to stick to your morning routine for a long period of time, then you need to put some thought into your evening routine as well. When I've been derailed from my routine in the past, two of the most likely culprits have been a lack of sleep and a lack of organization and preparation for each habit. And an evening routine can make both less likely to happen. For example, because I go to the gym every single morning, I always make sure to have my water bottle filled, my gym bag packed, and my headphones charged before I go to bed. And because I do these things at a specific time each night, I'm also less likely to stay up too late, and that gets me into to bed at the correct time for when I want to get up. And on that note, if you don't know when you should be going to bed, you can use a site like sleepytie.me to set when you want to wake up and it'll tell you when you should go to bed based on the science of sleep cycles. Now, next of sleep cycles. Now, next through my entire morning routine. So if you're curious, you can keep your eyes peeled for that. But one thing I can mention right now is that a big part of my morning routine involves listening to audiobooks. Not only do I often listen to books while I'm in the gym or out doing cardio, but I also usually listen to them while I'm walking to the coffee shop where I start my day's right. And the place where I get my audiobooks is Audible, which is this week's sponsor. Audible has an unmatched library of audiobooks in pretty much every genre you could think of. They also have a great app for managing them all, and one of my favorite features of that app is their bookmarking tool, which allows me to add bookmarks and notes, which is great for nonfiction because sometimes you want to go back and review things later on. Now, if you'd like to give Audible a try and see how it fits into your morning routine, you can get a 30-day free trial over at audible.com Thomas. That trial also comes with a free audiobook of your choosing that's yours to keep forever. And if you'd like a recommendation, I'm just going to recommend the book that I'm listening to right now, which is Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. This book is a really insightful look at both the history of Apple and what made Steve's brain tick. And if you're interested in Apple itself or the history of computing in general, it's a great book to pick up. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Seriously, I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel and you haven't done already, you can click right there to do so. I'm also going to put a couple of video suggestions right here that you might find interesting as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Dank memes.